Thank you for the beautiful teachings. Please forgive my ignorance. If Holy Quran opens from Muhammadan light to Muhammadan light, does the Sheikh's encryption open to the Sheikh's reflection? Could Sayyidi please elaborate on this? That subject is a very deep subject of, of Qur'an reading you. <clears throat> That's why it's like the beads, that when we put these beads together the one who contemplates is always has a, a plate filled with these beads and the one who contemplates is continuously sewing them together. So what we talked about last night is is we're talking about Prophet and he gave creation what he loved because it came from where the Qur'an? It came from the heart of Prophet Anyone holds Qur'an is holding the heart of Prophet I don't understand if people get that. He gave it with all his love. This was his trust He gave to you the best of what he has. He gave to you the word of Allah Coming from the heart of Prophet So the one whom loves Prophet when they hold Qur'an they hold Prophet They're holding his heart. That's why if you're dirty don't touch his heart. You don't need a scientist to tell you that. If you're not clean, don't hold the heart of Prophet And when you have a love and ishq and you washed, do you understand what you're holding? You're holding the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and you're asking from it to read, I want to read from your heart. God's uncreated words that emanated from your beautific and fragrant heart to me. And that's why Prophet is looking back to you. If you're crook and a criminal, of course he just gives you very basic because he's very loving. If you're a shaqeen and a lover and you're clean and, and trying your best to be sincere, he gives you the best of what he has. Haris alaykum bin mu'mineen. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah describes these attributes and adjectives of Prophet His harisun alaykum bin mu'mineen, his, his loving and, and gentle and kind to the believers. Why? Because they're holding the Qur'an and Prophet wants to dress them with the best of what Allah has and the Qur'an begins to teach them, dress them, fill them with lights. So that's when it understand, when we meditate and understand what they're trying to convey to us, you're not reading something, you're holding something very precious by one whom struggled all his life to bring that to us. And as a result when you hold it with that respect, what can you hold from Prophet What did he bring for anyone? He brought the Holy Qur'an. When we hold it with that respect, with that love, with that reverence, look at all these years of teachings are just few words from Holy Qur'an that keep putting out volumes and volumes and thousands of pages 
of reality because they're flowing fountain from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why tariqah is all adab, is all meditation. Why nobody's talking about that? We're not talking about that when you're holding Qur'an you're holding Prophet Wasallam's heart. He gave you. Anytime you hold something from someone who struggled to give you that, you're holding them. This is what they struggled for. He struggled and went through all his oppression and difficulties and everything that Prophet went through was for what? To deliver the Qur'an. So when you hold the Qur'an you're literally holding the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why Allah just said, yeah it's true because Yaseen is the heart of Qur'an and Prophet name is Sayyidina Yaseen. Habibullah and Sayyidina Aisha salam described Prophet is walking Qur'an. So I mean all of these signs is for the one to meditate and contemplate, of course. So I have to wash, I have to be clean, I have to have a clean heart. And how I can hold the heart of someone that I don't love? So I must love Prophet more than I love myself. And when I love Prophet more than I love myself and I hold his blessed heart within my hand, he'll be my guidance. And that's why I said they begin to make salawats and the Qur'an is guiding them. They make their durood and the Qur'an is guiding them and they understood every light is coming, every reality is coming from that reality. The one whom understands and keeps their mannerisms, keep their adab, then they have the same understanding. When you love your shaykh you have his book. When you have his book you're holding his heart in your hand. The fact that you read the book you read with love because he brought to you the same understanding. He didn't bring the book for himself. Prophet didn't have to give the Qur'an to anyone, it was already within his soul. The shaykh doesn't have to give the book out, he already has the knowledge. But when the person whom he puts the book out and teachings out and the student takes the, the teaching with a reverence, they're holding the heart of the shaykh in their being that you gave this with all your love and all your struggling and everything you went through to achieve these realities, you brought it out. I take it with a reverence and that's why the same understanding is that every time I wash and I clean and I read, I hear you speaking to me because this is the best of the shaykh, this is the heart of the shaykh, this is all the teachings and the jewels and the diamonds of the shaykh that are manifesting in these haqqaiq. He's not writing a book on fiqr that a thousand people can write. He brought to you a book on Surat al Yaseen and all the secrets of Prophet the ilm al yaqeen, the yalla ta'ifs, all those realities they're from the heart of the shaykh. When you read it with that respect you know that you're holding his heart in your hand and every two, three words you're reading or one page you're reading you feel that he is now teaching you. He's sending an encryption into your heart, he's sending a light into your being. Means everything that they're teaching it reciprocates all the way down. If you read with that respect the shaykh's words and felt that, yeah when I read your words I, I hear you talking to me. That's why they're not allowed to transcribe the shaykh's talks and make it in a perfected English because we have a lot of geniuses that could say, oh shaykh this English is just you know not right, let me write it like a Harvard English. But we don't speak like that. With every imperfection type it like that because then they'll say, I hear you. When I read this book I hear you well, because you're holding the heart of the shaykh. So it means the one whom loves they get the book, they read it with a reference and they begin to build the relationship with the shaykh that, I can hear you teaching me. And when I read these two, three pages at night you're coming and teaching me this reality. And then when they have that reverence then they apply that to the king of all kings. 
that the shaykh taught me to love Prophet I make my tarood, I make all my salawat and then I read ayat of kareem, a few ayahs of Qur'an, few pages of Qur'an and I feel myself in the presence of Prophet and that Prophet's light is dressing my heart and my soul. And that which he struggled and strived to bring upon this creation and upon this earth for that Qur'an to manifest, that was an immense mission. With that reverence the Qur'an begins to dress the servant, bless the servant. So we pray that Allah give us an immense understanding of, of these realities that are timeless. We're not talking about you know jurisprudence where you… what was the speed limit and how many cups of water you're supposed to use, you're talking about haqqaiqs, realities that have no time. Jurisprudence changes by your location. So jurisprudence of uh, wudu is going to be different from Africa, from Pakistan, from the US and from the moon. So when we start to travel into space jurisprudence will change but the haqqaiq never changes. The haqqaiq is the immense realities of eternity so it's not the same. When we read from haqqaiqs and realities they're of an immense eternal and timeless reality inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sayyidi, what is the reality of feeling physical pain in the ears while listening to, to Qur'an or important teachings? Anytime there's difficulty, even somebody described that I think they, they came to the tariqah or they did the bayat with the tariqah and all sorts of things started to whisper and that's what we described that no doubt that people don't understand how sick they are until they go to a doctor, right? So somebody can think, oh I'm very healthy. As soon as they go to the doctor they get the news and the doctor says, oh you're actually really sick because all those days you thought you were healthy you were actually very sick and in one visit you're given all this medicine you immediately become very sick from everything because now a cure is coming in when you are content living in your sickness thinking you're healthy and that's not the truth and that's not what Allah wanted you to go into the grave with all those worms and all those difficulties thinking, no, 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 I'm going to my grave, everything great. But Allah wants us to stop and a big rahmah and a big mercy from Allah is to be guided. And as soon as we enter into the guidance we start to feel all these horrific energies and that's their understanding of cleansing that, yeah maybe I'm not that clean because now I'm, I'm coming under all sorts of attacks. And then that's the whole guidance. Then you should be wearing a taweez, the shaykhs are all wearing taweez. If you look at their zawiyas and their homes they have this, uh, salawats and calligraphies of salawat everywhere, the taweezes are everywhere because they're in the front line of battling shayateen. So they understood you have to keep all of this uh, religious armament on yourself as you are battling these energies and definitely they're going to come after your ears, they're going to try not to leave the body, they're going to do all sorts of things. And don't think that shaitan says, oh you found that shaykh, okay congratulations, you know, well, let's go, let's pack it up guys, let's get out of here. He's, they're actually the one who guarded you is severely punished by shaitan and then a more advanced one has been sent. So their, their fight doesn't end, they don't just say, thank you, okay bye bye, good, good luck for you, please have a nice journey. But they're continuously battling the believer and the battle for the believer is now to take it more serious. That's why then they have the taweezes, they have everything. That's why people who don't know anything and ignorant, ignorant, ignorant people say, what are all these writings on everything? Why do you have writings on everything? I say, because you don't know yourself and you don't know your Islam. Go back to look at the companions. Every helmet had writing, every shield had writing, all of Prophet's swords had writing, all of their armament had all Qur'an and writing, all of the juppah of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban is filled with salawats in Qur'an. 
that they represent the heavenly nights, the heavenly fight. They're not here uh, not knowing what to do. It's the jahal and ignorant people that lost their way and think that, no these things don't exist. No go back to your Islamic history. All of it is salawats praising upon Prophet and Qur'an of Kareem all over them. And that was their armament, this was their, their way of battle against unseen devils. InshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What is the reality of hearing instrumental tune type sound in the ear? Is it spiritual or just nothing? Nothing. Anything you hear is going to be hear something. You can hear a loud pitch, a humming, a buzzing, maybe somebody is ringing a bell and somebody's talking about you. And but yeah, these things are, are not significant enough to keep your focus. After what we just talked about, you should be asking about the meditation, the contemplation, the, the talking of Qur'an to you, not if you're hearing a bell in your ear. These things are not going to make and break a person. So don't focus on these types of things, these are not important. What's important is to make the connection, feel the energy, enter into that realm and to be dressed by these things. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What's the best, uh, best thing to recite to uh, avoid waswas? The salawats, all the energy practices, make sure you have taweez, make sure you have all the energy practices, then you, you do your salawats, make your connection, that's all from the meditation book, Timeless Reality. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.